righty. I think we're in business now. All right, so I'm, I'm just typing in the comments the paint colors that we'll need, um, and I'll just say them out um, as well. So we've got black, blue, white, yellow, black, blue, white, yellow, and just a tiny bit of red. So those are the paint colors there that I just typed in the comments, black, blue, white, yellow, and a tiny bit of red. We'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Thank you guys for being here with me on another Jana Marie Foundation wellness break on this Thursday at 2 p.m. I'm looking behind me out, out my window and I see some blue sky, so that's really cool. That's good to see. Some of the flowers are are poking through all the dead leaves in my backyard here, so that's that's always a good sign. So I thought we'd do this kind of fun uh, painting that's reminiscent of summertime, right? So we'll have give everybody a couple minutes to get set up in case anybody's just arriving. Get your your paint area set up, or maybe you have paper and crayons. Whatever works, we can make it happen. You also might need some snacks and something to drink. Just make sure you're not drinking out of your paint cup and make sure you don't put your paintbrush in whatever you're drinking. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, I put the paint colors down in the, the comment section. We've got black, blue, white, yellow, and then a tiny bit of red is all we need. Just a tiny, tiny bit of red. You might want to take um, the time now to take a picture or a screenshot of the finished painting. I will reference it um, as we go on together doing this painting step by step. But if you want to get a shot of it now, now's a good time. I'm not going to lie, I'm currently eating a Wegmans Don't Have a Cow meatball, which I think are delicious. I don't know about you, but my eating schedule is a little bit off lately, so I'm kind of inhaling some fake meatball right now, but it's good. I hope you guys have a good snack and a nice drink. Excuse me if you can hear me eating. I'm really sorry. That's probably awful. I know some people just really don't like that. Anyway, <laughs> but thank you guys all for being here on this Dana Marie Foundation wellness break. I'm so grateful and happy to have you guys with me, and I'm grateful to the Dana Marie Foundation for having me along here. If if you can, if you're willing and able, um, you could go to the Dana Marie Foundation website janamariefoundation.org and you can easily find where you can donate a couple of dollars maybe just as a thank you to them for doing these wellness breaks they do amazing work here in the state college area in the center county region of pennsylvania so we want to we want to help them out and make sure they can keep doing that one of their major fundraisers was canceled as a result of all this craziness so we want to help them out in any way we can hi jennifer thanks for being here 
And hi, Marissa, Nikki, and Aaron, Molly. All right, so in case you missed it, these are our these are our pink colors, white, black, <laughs> right, black. Oh my goodness, I can't even speak. White, black, just a little bit of red, yellow, and blue. So the little bit of red is just this little ladybug. I just couldn't help myself. I wanted a ladybug. Um, you don't have to add the ladybug, but that's what the red will be for. We're going to use a big brush and a little brush. Yes, Cheryl, you can. These um, videos will be saved in the video section of the Jana Marie Facebook page. So if you go to their Facebook page, you can just click on videos on the left side and it will show all the videos of the Jana Marie Foundation, but this video will be saved there so you can watch it later. In fact, I know a lot of folks, um, it makes me really happy. A lot of folks tell me that they, they play the video late, late at night or later on in the day um, where they can have like dinner together and, and um, do paint. So yeah, absolutely, Cheryl, it will be there. And hi, Anya and Evan. I'm so gl glad you guys are here. Again, I can't wait to see your finished product. Anyway, so these are the paints that we'll be needing if you're going to be painting along with me. But you can, you can use crayons with me, watercolors, chalks, highlighters, whatever you got in the house. We're going to make it work. All right. So. Oh, I'm, I'm sad that they have to miss it too, but it'll be there. And what's great about the video being saved later is you can pause it and, and play it or, or, you know, go back and rewind. Do we say rewind anymore? I don't know. But yeah, you can watch it and, and speed through whatever you need to do. So I'll be, I'll be glad to, to see your finished products later. All right, so let's get started. Let me grab my blank canvas. Alrighty, so to start, we are going to put a little bit of black paint across the top here, okay? Just a little, because a little black will go a long way, and then we're going to start blending down our sky, okay? So I'm going to grab my big brush, my big flat brush, this one right here, and I'm going to go into my black paint. Yes, uh, Rachel, you can go to the Janet Marie Foundation Facebook page, and later on this video will be saved in the videos section, like where you click for photos, there's a link for photos, there will be a link for videos, and you'll click there, and this video will be saved there. So it's super, super convenient, right? So people can go back and watch later on. All right. Uh, it sounds like everybody has a Zoom meeting, right? Everybody has a Zoom meeting any, every, every minute of the day. All right, so I'm just taking a very little bit of black paint on my big brush here, and I'm just going to go right across the top of my canvas. How far? Not very far at all. Okay, maybe an inch, an inch and a half. And I'm not using a lot of paint, again, because a little... A little black will go a long way, okay? So in fact, if you have any big old glops of paint on your canvas, I would try to just clean those up. Just grab those, peel those away from that canvas. We don't need a lot of black paint up there, okay? Um, if I do have any glops on my brush too, I'm gonna wipe those off. I don't need to wash my brush in the water just yet. I'm just gonna make sure I get as much of that pigment off of the brush as I can. And now I'm gonna go into straight blue. Go into some blue here, okay? And now I'm gonna start blendy blendy with the black that's already there. So I'm just gonna start a little bit below, back and forth, back and forth, and then slowly go upwards into that black paint, back and forth, back and forth going up into that black, and then I'm gonna slowly move my way down into the blue. Back and forth, back and forth, and up and down. And as a, as a close-up, this is how my brush goes slow-mo, right? So the wide part of the brush is going back and forth like that, but much faster. Okay, and then we can get a nice dark blue blend for our night sky. 
All right, same thing. I'm just gonna wipe off any excess pigment I have on this brush. Just wipe off as much as I can. And then go back into the blue and repeat. Right below, back and forth and back and forth and go up into that darker blue back and forth and up and down. This is where it's like therapy. It's like super relaxing for me anyway. I hope it's relaxing and fun for you. So these blendies, these blendy blends as I call them, they might take a little bit of practice, but I promise you, you can do it. It's kind of a, a matter of getting a feel for how much paint that you need on the brush, making sure you clean off your brush in between colors. Uh, wipe, wipe off the brush, not, not clean it. If we clean it with water, then we run the risk of um, cleaning the canvas instead of um, putting paint back on the canvas. So back and forth and back and forth and up and down. Same thing, I'm gonna wipe off any excess pigment I've got. Thank you guys, if you're just joining us here, thank you so much for being here on the Jenna Marie Foundation Facebook page for this wellness break. I'm so happy you guys are here. I look forward to painting with you guys. Tuesdays, I'm on my own Facebook page, Paint with Jackie. Thursdays, I've been here at the Jenna Marie Foundation page. Uh, to support them and all the awesome stuff that they do in our local community here in State College, Pennsylvania. Um, if you're just joining, we started out with some black at the tippity top of our canvas, and then we just um, added blue, and we're going to keep on adding blue as we go down here. So back into my blue paint. A little bit below, back and forth, back and forth, and then go up. So if you're using crayons, you can kind of do the same effect back and forth, back and forth, up and down. Your crayons won't blend next to each other, um, won't mix together really, but you can, you can do the crayon on top, a little bit of blue on top of the black, and so on. How are we doing? Ooh, this is a fun one. Awesome. See, when I take my time, I can get so much good blending. When I when I do these, when I do the originals, I'm working much much faster um, because I don't have to slow down and make sure everybody's caught up. So when I do the originals, I tend to do them really quickly, and I notice that when I really get the time to spend with the blend, I mean, look at how much better it is. Not better, but just more blended, right? So if you are getting that you want that blended look. You just got to take take the time, right, to get those blends in. When you do it fast like this, you get a little bit more streaky, you know. Um, and that's just how I, I work when I'm making the, the models to paint. I, I tend to not give myself enough time to do them and end up doing them very quickly. Um, but I am definitely appreciating slowing down. Anybody else appreciating kind of just slowing down a bit lately? I've definitely appreciated that. With everything going on and how different and the challenges we've got going on right now, I, I am embracing the slowdown, I think. I'm just gonna keep pulling down some of that blue. Now, when I get to around this, this point in my canvas, maybe halfway or a little bit a little bit longer than halfway I do want to wipe off excess paint and give my brush a good clean rinse um, the reason for that is I want to remove any black that's still in my brush because for our next paint color white we don't want black um, doing its thing with with the, the white paint in there okay so again I'm going to wipe off any excess paint always good to wipe off excess paint before you put it in your paint cup 
uh, excuse me, your, your water cup. It helps save the life of our brushes. There's no need to put on a big old glop of paint on a brush and a cup of water. All right, again, now I'm giving my brush a nice good clean rinse. I wanna make sure any, any of that leftover black paint is removed. All right. All my paint is removed from my brush and I do want to make extra sure that my paint is nice and dry. I mean, not my paint, my brush. My brush is nice and dry, okay? And again, the reason for that is if my brush is wet right now, it might start cleaning the canvas instead of putting paint on it. So once you get water on your brush on an already um, painted canvas, you might start scrubbing it away actually. All right, I think we're good here. So now I'm going to, I'm gonna go back into straight blue. I think for a little bit more, I'm gonna bring that down just a bit. And then I'm gonna go into some white. I, I do not need to rinse or wash my brush at all. Just gonna grab some white here. And I'm gonna start blending into that blue. And then we get this light, this light blue happening with this white paint back and forth and back and forth and up and down. Grab some more of that white. By the way, you can probably see my um, absolute mess of a paper plate. I, I reuse them. There's no need of, with acrylic paint. There's really no need to throw out your, your plate of paint. It will, it will be fine. In fact, keeping the acrylic on there makes the, makes the paper plate stronger and not water soluble. So that's a bonus. But yeah, look at my messy palette. That's what I'm working with here. Try to re I try to reuse as much as I can. Alrighty. Some more white back and forth and back and forth and up and down. So I'm down to about there, the technical term of about there. I have about three, I don't know, three and a half inches left here. It's, it's really up to you about how far you want your sky to go down. In fact, I think I'm going down lower with my sky here than compared with the original. So yeah, I've gone down, gone down just a little bit farther there and that's totally fine. All right, I'm just having so much fun with these blends. I, again, I usually don't take the time to slow down with these blends. So this is really fun for me. This is really cool. How's it going out there, folks? I've got a feeling that everyone is doing a great job. I just, I can feel it. I can feel all that awesome artistic energy is just like flowing through the the cloud that is the internet and and hitting me right in the face through my iPhone right now. All right, guys. We are ready for our next step. So, once we've gotten down um to a point where we're ready for our our grass, we are going to wipe off any excess paint and give our brush a nice good clean rinse. So wiping off that paint and give my brush a bath. Make sure that brush is nice and dry. So yeah, if anyone you know um, would love to paint along with us, but they can't be here, just let them know that they can go to the Jenna Marie Foundation Facebook page and find this video saved 
in the video section of their page. It's really cool. I don't know how technology works, but it automatically happens and saves it there. So that's really cool. So anybody you know can just visit that Facebook page whenever they can and follow along later on. All right. Next trick that we're going to do is we're going to put down the base color for the grass, okay? And believe it or not, maybe you can believe it, the base color for the grass is just straight black, okay? So we're just going to decide where this horizon line is or where the grass meets the sky, and we're just going to fill in with black paint. This is easy, right? So I'm just grabbing some black, black paint with my brush and I'm just gonna fill in the bottom here. Just filling in here. And I'm not using a lot of paint. We don't need a lot of black paint really to get the job done. And it's going to help us in the long run if we don't have a lot of paint here because we want this to dry before we put like our blades of grass down. All right. So now... I'm going to imagine where my jar, my glass jar is going to be, okay? And I'm gonna wanna leave, leave that space open, okay? For the rest, I wanna start pulling out little tiny blades of grass. Now these, these blades of grass are farther away from us in the painting, so those are gonna be smaller, okay? These, these blades of grass are closer to us, they're, so they're gonna look bigger. So right now I'm with just regular black paint, just straight black paint. I'm going to start adding these little little tufts of grass, these little blades of grass. I'm still just going to use my big brush because I like because I have an angled brush here. It makes my life a lot easier, but you can use whatever brush you like to make small lines with. I just like moving it back and forth on my plate and I get a nice edge. And then again, I'm going to imagine my jar, my mason jar going right about here. So I'm going to leave that part blank because we're going to do something special to that later. But I'm just going to imagine my little, little blades of grass come out over here and then a little bit over here. Just really, really small little blades of grass. You can kind of add little, little mounds in the dirt there and just pull out some little little things here. Okay, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect because people will know that that's grass. I promise you. I promise. I know some of you do not believe me. There we go. How about that? So now we got some, some grass in silhouette there. Okay. All right. For our next step, for me, I'm going to move to my smaller brush, okay? But I do want to keep this brush nice and clean. We don't want that acrylic paint to dry on those bristles. So I'm going to wipe off any excess paint on my brush and then give this brush a nice good clean rinse. I want to thank Jen and Marie Foundation again for, for letting me be here with you guys, hosting this wellness break on their Facebook page. Again, if you can, go to their website, janamariefoundation.org, and throw them a couple of dollars as a thanks for, for painting along with me today. They're, um, like many nonprofits, have certainly taken a hit, and um, we can support them in any way we can. That would be awesome. All right, I'm just giving my... Big brush or rinse here. All right, 
get that nice and dry. Okay, now I'm going to move to a smaller brush, a brush that I feel good about um, having control with smaller lines. So this is, this is the brush I'll be using, okay? And we are going to, ooh, actually, because some of you might not be dry enough here, let's, let's have some fun. We're going to do stars first. Yeah, let's do stars first. We're going to hold off on the jar because some of you might have a lot of wet paint here. Mine is pretty dry because I don't, I don't tend to use a lot. Um, but yeah, let's save the jar and let's have some fun and do these stars. How about that? Okay, so we're going to focus, focus the stars up in the, the darker night sky, right? And if you painted along with me on Tuesday at the Paint with Jackie page, we did stars together. So some of you might remember how to do it. I'm going to wet my brush. Going to wet my brush here. And just touch into my white paint and just by touching into it I can create like a little puddle and just mush that around and I get my paint to the consistency of like heavy cream that's what we're going for and I recommend you try this out on um, your brother or sister or the tablecloth. No, don't do that. Don't listen to me. Don't do it to your brother or sister. That's just a joke. That's not even a funny one. Your parents will kill me. Okay, so don't do that. But you're going to mix up some white and, and some water to get like a, a really wet paint that's like heavy cream. Okay, and then... And you can practice first, but I'm going to do it here. I hold out two fingers, and I just hit my fingers with the brush. And that helps us control a bit where it goes, okay? It, um, I don't recommend doing like a, a magic wand, like a, a thwack like this, because then you can get like a line of paint. And, it, and you don't have as much control. Here, you have a lot of control about where those stars go. If you're having trouble getting the stars to come off your brush, then that means you probably need a little bit more water to get it more thin. If you notice that your stars are huge, <laughs> you might have too much water or just too much of the pigment on your brush to begin with. Okay, so I'll give you guys a minute to, to try your hand at that. I think I'm going to eat another meatball. So you have... You have some time to catch up. My cat is super interested in the meatball that I'm eating. I wonder if I can show you. Willie. Willie, say hi. <laughs> She's not a fan. <laughs> hey, Willie. How's it going out there? If you painted with me on Tuesday, then you, you probably already know how to do those stars. And I have utmost faith in you that you're doing awesome. So again, it helps to practice with, you know, how hard do I need to, to hit my, my fingers to get that effect. It kind of takes practice to get the right consistency of the water and the paint. 
All right, guys. For our next trick, we're going to put down the jar. Right, Willie? All right. So, for this jar, um, we're going to start at the top, and then we're going to pull down the sides and add some, some shimmer and shine. Now, whenever um, I do a painting with a jar like this, I promise you, you're going to hate it at first, and then you're going to like it. So, if you hate what you do with your jar the first time, that means you're doing it right, okay? So it's, it's just going to look a little weird, but I promise you it'll be fine when we're all done with it. All right. So for the first part of the jar, I'm going to get some white paint on my brush, first of all, and I'm going to paint the opening. So a really flat oval. Like that, something like that. Okay. See, it's not perfect, but that's okay. Then, underneath that oval, I'm going to paint three or four parallel lines. And these are this is like where you would screw the lid on for that jar. Right? So something like that. Right, so that's now the the mouth of the jar, right? Those little treads where we would be able to screw on a metal lid. Okay, and then once we have those, I can I can pull out the sides of the jar. So there's going to be like a little curve. Okay, so I'm going to start right where those ridges are. I'm going to pull down just a little, like straight down, just a very little bit, and then pull out a curve for that side of jar. Okay, and I'm not going all the way down, okay? I'm just going to pull down just a little bit, and I'm going to imagine that some grasses that we're going to do later are going to cover up the bottom of the jar, so I don't have to worry about the bottom of the jar, okay? That's another great trick in painting. If you don't want to paint it, then have something cover it. <laughs> it's usually a leaf in my world, a leaf or a branch or a flower. If I don't want to paint it, cover it up with something. Okay. Same thing on the other side, starting at the right side of that. Those ridges pull straight down a little bit and then curve. And pull down. All right. How are we doing? Again, if you hate it, you're not alone. It's a little weird right now, but we're going to add some details and shimmer and shine, and it's going to look like a jar, I promise. Especially tomorrow, once you've had time, you got to sleep on it and have new perspective. <laughs> Nikki is liking out of control. I'm wondering if that's there's a kitty cat on the keyboard. <laughs> All right, so now let's put some shimmer and shine. All right, for me, my shimmer and shine on this jar, well, let me give this a bit more thickness there, yeah. So for me, my shimmer and shine is gonna be a little bit over here, it's gonna be a little bit down here, and right on the curve, I'm gonna follow that curve like that, and then a little bit back here. Okay? Willie, don't eat the plant. Stop it. My cat is eating the house plant. My cat, I don't know about you, but my cat tells me every day that I'm starving her and that she's going to die soon if I don't feed her all the time. All right, so again, I put some shimmer right over here, some shimmer down here, and then right on the curve of where that the curve of the jar, the body of the jar would be. Okay? 
Now, at this point, I hope that your painting, the black part and the blue, is pretty dry. Okay? If it's not dry, then you're going to have to wait until it is. You can kind of wave your canvas or whatever you're using. You can go get the hair dryer and hair, use the hair dryer to dry it. That works really well. But you do want the paint to be dry before we proceed. Okay, so our next step with that white paint still on our brush, we're going to, I always say prime, and prime is when we paint something white first before we put the actual color on it, and we're going to be priming these fireflies, okay, or lightning bugs, um, whatever you guys call them. So I'm going to be just putting, right, so right now they're yellow, right, in the finished product they're yellow, but before we do that, we want to prime with white. And by priming something in white, it helps the color, the real color, show up on top really well. So I'm going to, with my white paint on my little brush, I'm going to just draw circles wherever I want my lightning bugs to be. Okay, so I've got kind of a big one down here in the jar. And you'll notice that um, even though my, my black paint is dry, some of that black is showing through. That's totally fine. Do not worry about that. We just want to get a little brightness and lightness down. Okay. I'm going to add another one over here. Another one up here. And these lightning bugs are just kind of escaping out of this jar. And I recommend doing different sizes right? So the big ones, a big one like this will look like it's closer to me and a smaller one will look farther away. And I'm just going to put these wherever I want my little lightning bugs to be. And again, they don't have to be perfect little circles here. You might even want to use the back end of your brush as like a stamp. Um, it's up to you. We're just priming for where the yellow will go later on. All right. How are we doing, folks? Yeah, this one looks kind of weird for a minute, right? Because our fireflies look like snowballs. And maybe we're not a fan of our jar just yet, but we will be. Oh, I had some shimmer over here, too, on my jar. Let me put some shimmer over here. I had some shimmer over here. Yeah. I like some shimmer. All right, how are we doing, folks? Looking good. I can tell. I can just feel it. All right. I'm just wiping off my excess white paint here. And I'm going to start mixing some green for my grass. Okay. Now, um, we want to move on to our grass because we want those white dots to dry before we put the yellow on top of it. It'll help us out in the long run. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to mix a green. Now, kiddos, how do I make green? What, what do I have to add to yellow to make green? Shout it out. That's right. I need blue. Okay, so I'm going to mix just a little bit of green with blue and yellow. Okay, and I'm going to start in the background, so up here, it's farther away, and I'm just going to start to pull out very, very small, short pieces of grass. Again, these are farther away from us, so they are shorter. Something like that, right? And then maybe with a different kind of green, maybe I'm just add a little bit more yellow. In the middle, in the middle ground, I can add middle sized pieces of grass, blades of grass, right? So these are 
These are a bit closer to us, so I'm going to make them bigger. All right. And now for the front, these these are closest to us, right? These are closer to us, so I'm just going to make them the biggest blades of grass. And I'm going to kind of go right in front of our jar here. Just pull out these larger blades of grass here. And you might want you might want to add some white even just to give a different shade of green. So a nice bright green there. And then even the blades of grass that are closest to the jar, they might be getting some shine and shimmer from those lightning bugs. And they might be casting some yellow light on our grass here. So I'm going to give some of those blades of grass again. Yep, Nikki, I'll show the original again. There we go. So different different shades of green. You can try adding some whites and some yellows to the greens that you have. There we go. Got it? So you can have fun with just all sorts of different kinds of greens that you can mix. Maybe you have a straight um, green paint. Play with adding some yellow to that green. Play with adding some blue to that green. Some white even. It's really fun kind of playing around and, and finding different greens. For me, it's like um, discovery or like a, a scavenger hunt. When I do live paint events, when I can actually see people, uh, you might hear me say something like, ooh, I love that color you found. Because to me, it's like kind of searching and exploring what color does and figuring out and finding colors. So I kind of like finding all the different greens I can I can do. And we've got something like that. And a nice black background kind of helps do a lot of the work for us. We don't have to put a thousand blades of grass down because the black paint kind of kind of does its job for us, especially in a night in a night scene, right? We we don't have to worry about filling in every little spot. All right, guys. This is a fun one. They're all fun in their own in their own different way. The blending is really fun here. Doing stars is always fun. Kind of playing with different blades of grass is fun. All right. So, right now, um, my, my white, um, I was going to say sunflowers, woof, my white, uh, lightning bugs are pretty much dry. Okay. They might not be perfectly dry, but they're dry enough, let's say. Okay. So I'm going to wipe off the excess paint from my brush here. And I'm going to give my brush a good clean rinse oh boy I'm so glad you can't see my workspace because I've got paper towels just everywhere little dirty painted paper towels everywhere all right so now I want to go over my lightning bugs with yellow okay so I'm just going to cover over all my lightning bugs with yellow. And if you get a little mixing happening, a little black showing through, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, it does not have to be a perfect white circle, right? We're just going for that little glow, right? Oof, kind of lost my shape there. There we go. So yeah, we're just kind of covering each lightning bug now with white, uh, excuse me, with yellow paint. Get those covered. 
and they don't even have to be perfect. This is our painting and we can do what we want. All right. All righty, now we got, we're almost there with those lightning bugs. So I'm gonna take advantage of the yellow that I have on my brush and I'm gonna give some yellow shimmer to my jar. I have some yellow shimmer here and I think that's about it really. But yeah, you might wanna add some yellow shimmer. I'm just gonna add some more. Yeah, I like it. All right, also with our white, uh, excuse me, our yellow paint, just a very little bit, I'm gonna use to go around each circle with like a little halo, a little um, spotted line kind of ring, right? You can see it better in the finished. So going over each, each circle gets like a little uh, dotted, line of yellow paint again it's not it's not perfect i went through it very quickly but you just give a little spotted spotted line around each little lightning bug all right oof don't want to have my painting fall over. So yeah, just getting each little lightning bug gets a little glow, gets its own little glow. Everybody's quiet now. At least I'm quiet. <laughs> There's a little glow for each of our little lightning bugs. And once we're done with putting a little ring around each, each of our little lightning bugs, we're going to give the center of each of these circles a little white dot. And I'll show you how to do that once I'm done putting these little things around here. You can't see this, but I'm, I'm actually sitting in the chair where my cat usually naps and I had to, I had to move her so I could set up my paint here and she is the queen because she's just, she went right behind me and she's taking a nap right behind me right now. So she's like, I don't care if you're here. I will, I will sleep. This is my chair. All right. Now I've got some little glowies, some glow around our lightning bugs here. You could also do this in white. That might make it a little brighter. Yeah, if you add, so yeah, pro tip, add a little white to your yellow and that will help it stand out a bit more. Yeah, something like that. All right. So once we've got our glow around our circles, we're gonna add a little dot of white into each center. And that's gonna help it really look like there's a light inside of each, each of those uh, yellow circles. So all I'm going to do 
is take the back end of my brush here and use it as a stamp. So I'm going to tap into some white and then stamp it in the center of each circle here. So each little, the center of each lightning bug is going to just look like it's glowing. Like it has a light bulb in each center. There we go. How about that? Looks like there's a light on in each in each one. Right? All right, team. We are almost done. And you could and you could be done right here. Oh, I'm so glad, Cheryl. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy that you're having fun. Um I will be here. No, I will not be here. I will be at my Facebook page next week on Tuesday at 2 p.m. And I'll be back here at Janet Marie Foundation page next Thursday, also at 2 p.m. So I hope I hope to see you next week. Anybody who has to leave right now. But we we are almost done here and you could you could be done right now. But I don't know. I just I couldn't help myself. I wanted a ladybug. I thought this painting needs just a little bit of red. I don't know. And I, I just love me a ladybug. They make me happy. They make me smile. And they're really fun and simple to paint. So all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to prime a little circle for my ladybug to live at. Okay, like this. Oh, that's, that's a monster ladybug right there. I think I went a little big. But hey, that's okay. <laughs> And in a perfect world, I would have time to let that dry. Um, in fact, I used a, uh, a, a hair dryer earlier just to just to get that to dry up quick. Um, and then what I like about the ladybug is I can really lay on the red paint nice and thick. So if you have acrylic paint, this will work. Um, but the acrylic works really nicely. You can just lay it on top. You're kind of like icing a cake. Like... Imagine icing a cupcake and you just want a lot of that icing on there. Mm. So I can just lay that paint on nice and thick and it almost kind of will dry 3D, right? So that's kind of fun. So I'm just laying, laying that, that red paint on there. And then just like we did for our lightning bugs... I can use the back end of my brush, the back end of my brush, dip into some black, and then I can give this ladybug her very special spots, like that. I have to grab some more black paint. Something like that, like that. Yeah, and then with my little brush, I can paint on her head. Again, I wanna kinda paint it on like I'm icing a cake, just so I got like a nice, a nice bead of paint there. And I'm just going to ice it on like a cake. So she's got a little head and I'll pull down her little line in between her wings. And then we've got a little ladybug. And that will dry a bit, a bit raised, a bit 3D. So I can kind of show you here. Is she dry? Oh, she's not even dry yet. So I won't touch her. But yeah, that'll dry a little bit 3D. And now we've got a little ladybug. She's like, I want to hang out with you guys. You guys are awesome talking to the lightning bugs. She's like, I'm so jealous that you have a light. 
But they're like, but I'm jealous because you're red and awesome. See, guys, I miss you so bad. I, I, there, I can only talk to myself right now. <laughs> I miss teaching people in real life so much, but I do, I want to say, guys, thank you so, so much for joining me today, and those of you have who have been joining me um, recently these past few weeks, it has been something that I look forward to, doing these these paintings online. It's it's hard not seeing you, and I miss being with people and, and seeing people create art, um, you know, as it happens. But this has been such a joy, and I'm so grateful and thankful that you guys are here with me. Post your finished products, fo- photos of your paintings, of your artwork in the in the um, not the chat in the comment section here. Uh, we love looking at them; they bring us so much joy. And I hope that you had some fun today, brought a little color to your day, some light. Um, in, in these, these days that have been very, very strange and challenging for so many of us. Again, uh, please check out Jana Marie Foundation website, throw a couple of dollars their way as a thank you maybe for, for letting us do this with them. Like so many nonprofits, they are struggling right now. They missed out on a great opportunity for one of their bigger fundraisers. So check out their website. They do so much awesome programming in State College in the Center County region. We really appreciate them, and, I, and I'm and i grateful to be here. I will be at my own personal uh, Facebook page, Paint with Jackie, next Tuesday at 2 p.m., and I'll be back here for Jana Marie Foundation, also Thursday at 2 p.m., and I hope to see you there. Again, thank you so much for painting with me. Show off those those photos with us. We love looking at them. And this is Jackie with Paint with Jackie at Jana Marie Foundation, and I'll catch you next time. Great work.